Um, it's a very long title, but um, I'm sorry, and it's so late, it's going to get a bit sciencey. And this is very, it's a very specific study, not so much um, relating to management as yet. But that's because the species is relatively new um, as an invasive species. So if we don't know what it's doing, we can't um, exactly make any management plans about it as yet. Okay, so what do we know about invasions and biological interactions? Firstly, um, we know that once an invasive species is introduced into a new environment, it's the interactions it has with native species and the environment that determine uh, its success and whether it becomes um, invasive and can spread to new areas. So by looking at the type and strength of interactions, we can also get an insight into ecological principles. This is possible because we can study these organisms and the way they interact. Instead, um, and by using this, we can... Uh, Sorry. <laughs> By studying the interactions with these organisms, we can um, understand how, they, uh, how natural communities would coexist. So direct interactions, we, we can look at behavioral responses. And um, often these observed effects uh, take place at the level of the individual, but can translate to, levels, uh, to changes at the level of the ecosystem. And the, most, um, the primary uh, direct interaction that we look at is competition. In this study, we looked at a chemical cue between two species as a direct interaction, because even though there's no physical contact, there's still a direct response to this chemical cue. So chemical cues. A cue is defined as a stimulus which is released into the environment, which is not deliberately generated to have a specific effect. So in this context, chemical cues could be waste products or secondary metabolites. Also, it's well known that chemoreception is important for gastropods as it guides their locomotion and gives them environmental information. So studies have shown that the presence of um, invasive gastropods can reduce the fitness of natives in terms of reducing their, their reproduction capacity or slowing down their growth rates. So therefore, um, it has been assumed that cues can mediate a direct interaction among alien and native gastropods. So the aim of the study was to test the effect of chemical cues released by an alien invasive gastropod, Terebia grinifera, on the behavior of the native gastropod, Estimonea cf ovata, in the St. Lucia estuary. Okay, a little bit of background on the players. Estimonea cf ovata, previously known as Estimonea bifasciata, inhabits moderately saline environments. It's a benthic grazer and occurs in high, in high density and consequently high biomasses. It's an important trophic link in Lake St. Lucia because it transfers its benthic primary production to um, high trophic levels as a food source for crabs and flamingos. And um, the alien species, Terebia grinifera, is endemic to Southeast Asia. Although it's considered a freshwater species, it has a remarkable tolerance for salinity of up to 30. So it also um, exhibits an explosive population growth due to its parthenogenetic reproduction by um, reproducing um, clones. So there's no sexual reproduction at all. And this is just a picture of the density that these um, terebia are occurring currently. This is from uh, Catalina Bay. So in KZN, the first report of terebia was from a paper mill reservoir in Mandeni in 1999. Currently, it is widespread in Isimangaliso, and it is found in areas of the St. Lucia estuary, the South Lake and the Narrows, as well as Cozy Bay, Makakatana, Mkuzi River, and Lake Sabaya. The southern distribution in the province extends to Amanzam Toti, as well as inland freshwater systems in Mpumalanga and in the Kruger National Park. So, we know that chemical cues provide environmental information which guide locomotion. So for this study, we measured movement, where we quantified movement as a kinesis or taxis response, where kinesis is a random and undirected movement, and taxis is non-random and directed and can be positive or negative in response to the stimulus. So we know that Terebia uh, has become dominant um, despite abundant food resources. A stable isotope studies have shown there is dietary overlap and that there are abundant food resources so the natives should be able to coexist. So therefore we assume that there um, must be an interaction between these two species that's more complex than just general exploitative competition. 
So the hypothesis was that as Simonea CF Avata, individuals would, re would respond with a negative taxis to chemical cues released by Terebia granifera. And what this means, if you remember the previous slide, is that they would actively move away from the stimulus. So uh, for this uh, study, we adopted some methods from Wallman et al. And here's just a picture of our study site. We um, did in situ experiments at two sites within the South Lake. So at Catalina Bay and at Charters Creek. At Catalina Bay, as you saw in the picture, there's a very well-established population of Terebia granifera, although the natives do occur, but in a much lower abundance. At Charters Creek, on the opposite side, um, the invasive species has not become established there, and we only find the native one. So to prepare for the experiments, we know that the chemical cues are released into the surrounding environment by the gastropods. Therefore, water which is contained these gastropods will be conditioned with the cues. So what we did was we made an extract using a filtered volume of water from the site, put the gastropods in the water for a period of time, and left them to release their cues naturally. So we knew that the cues would be contained within this extract. So to prepare the extract, we used two litre buckets, 300 mils of filtered water, and the same biomass of gastropods for each species, and we fed them um, some algae, so they were ad libitum, they weren't starved during this time. And we kept them for 10 hours. So um, what we ended up having was three chemical Q treatments, one for each species and one control, which did not contain any gastropods in it. So after the 10 hours of conditioning, we filtered um, the water through a GF filter, and then we refrigerated until use in the actual experiment. Okay, so this is our general experimental setup. We used an inverted video camera to uh, record the movement of the snails, and we did, this in, um, we did the experiments within a large experimental tank. So to go into detail there, we use the tank to prevent um, environmental contamination because if we did it straight into the water, we would confound any further experiments thereafter. We then used a burette to deliver the extract to the center of a perspex arena, which we had uh, traced uh, circles of uh, 10 and 20 centimeter diameter, which we used for um, reference during the experiment to orient the snails right and for uh, data extraction later after watching the videos. And then the movement of the snail was recorded with the video camera. Okay. Okay, treatments. Before the experiments, we collected the snails immediately, so we didn't use the same snails that we used in the buckets to make the extracts. We used uh, fresh um, individuals. And then at Catalina Bay, we ran experiments with both the invasive and the native species with all three treatments. Well, at Charters Creek, we only used the native species because we didn't want to risk introducing the invasive one at Charters Creek where they weren't established, so we didn't bring them there at all. Okay, and um, data collection, obviously, we used the video footage, which we then traced out as pathways. And then um, what we had to uh, get from this uh, video, the first thing we measured was the distance traveled. So um, measuring from where the... Uh, individual started to where the source of the extract was being introduced and then with the position where the individual ended and the source of the extract. So we had um, if the distance, if the snail had moved away from the extract, the distance would be negative and if it moved towards the extract, the distance would be positive. We also made a note of any no responses, so any individuals that remained within the shell, we took note of that. And then we recorded the number of steps using a standardized path uh, send us step size um, using a statistical method for uh, path analysis. And then, most importantly, we measured the turning angles with reference to the direction of the previous step. So the reason we did this was to relate it to the kinesis or taxis response, because if the movement was random, then um, the mean turning angle for the gastropod would not be different from zero, because it would be a random movement every time. But if there was a taxis, a distinct uh, directed movement, the mean turning angle would be different from zero and would indicate um, a directed movement. So what did we find? In terms of distance traveled, we found... Um, Okay, firstly, we found no difference between sites. So we found this interesting because even though the natives at Charters Creek had never been um, exposed to the invasive species because they aren't established there, they responded in the same way to the ones that are at Catalina Bay. So in terms of distance traveled, we found a significant difference in response of a Simonea ovata, so the blue color, to the conspecific cue and the cue released by the um, invasive species. 
significant difference there, but no difference between the control and the Terebia um, Q. Also, in terms of the number of steps taken, we found a similar pattern here. Again, no difference between sites, and also um, no difference between the control and the Terebia treatment, but a much lower number of steps and distance traveled in response to the conspecific treatment. So what we assume was happening here was that there was an aggregation response to a conspecific queue, where they would want to be associated with the queue that represented a conspecific, whether it may be for protection or to know that that habitat was inhabited by conspecifics. Okay? And also just to note that we found no difference for treatments with Tigranifera, so they responded the same to all um, the control, the native, and the conspecific treatment. Okay, so then um, when you look at kinesis and taxis, however, the, uh, the whole pattern becomes a lot clearer. When we look at the control and the uh, conspecific extract, we look at these pie graphics here. Uh, the arrows represent the mean turning angle for the group, and the shaded slices are the 95% confidence intervals. So we have uh, no significant difference from zero in response to the control and the conspecific treatment at both Catalina and Charles's Creek. So therefore, we can conclude it was a kinesis response. However, when we look at the, the response to the Terebia extract at Catalina Bay and Charters Creek, we have a significant difference from zero, and this difference is negative. So we can conclude that this is a response of negative taxes. So, in conclusion, we know that a Simonea ovata shows a significant response and orients with negative taxes to cues released by the invasive species and therefore actively moves away from these um, regions where the invasive species is. So we know that Terebia granifera has the potential to affect large-scale distributions of the native, which may have a trophic impact, because currently it's unknown whether any species are actively feeding on Terebia, as it has been noted that they can pass through the guts of birds that feed on them. Um, also, even though this is not a physical form of interaction, it is still direct interference competition, because the result of... Um, the response, the natives actively moving away, uh, prevents them from utilizing the available um, resources, uh, food and space resources in the area. Um, this makes an important contribution to invasion ecology because so far we haven't found any other literature that has shown us anything about chemical cues mediating responses between competitors. It also makes an important contribution to community ecology and also for management, because if the species is releasing a chemical cue into an aquatic environment, just given the medium of the aquatic environment, any transportation of this cue could move to areas and affect natives in areas where the invasive species is not even established. As we saw at Charters Creek, they responded in the same way, even though they'd never been previously exposed. I just want to say thank you. That's it. <laughs> Right, really fascinating. Um, again, I think probably uh, one question, if uh, somebody would like to do that quickly, otherwise, uh, obviously, there will be a chance uh, during the icebreaker. There's a question there from Craig. Just a quick question. Um, I don't want, maybe I'm being a little bit unfair, but from a management point of view, the first thing that strikes me is, why is it that the Terebia hasn't established in Charters Creek and it has in Catalina Bay? Um, we, think, oh, sorry. we think that it's because of the, um, the freshwater aquifer at Catalina, which makes it um, a lot more habitable because it is a freshwater species. It can withstand the salinity of up to 30, but they um, retract into the shell and it's not, it's not a happy place for them. So <laughs> this is the only way I can say it. Charges Creek is slightly more saline. So we think they may be moving under the South Lake as we speak, but for now um, we, we haven't found them there at Charters, only at Catalina and then um, through to the, the Narrows. Yeah. Right. Thank you very much, Jacqueline.